Okay, guys, um, this is just a quick video to go over the concept of uh, combining a um, analog sensor input and then uh, remapping the data type or data range into a usable um, digital output, right? So our input here is going to be the photoresistor sensor circuit that we did in the last class. And then our output circuit is going to be the servo motor that you guys have been messing around with in your exercise. Okay? So it's basically, and I'll show you this in class, but essentially it's combining this uh, photoresistor circuit to run alongside the uh, servo circuit. Okay? And you know this is plugging it directly, which you know for the most part for larger servos you shouldn't do. But we'll get into that a little bit later. All right. So um, this is the Firefly template, and as you can see, I just opened it. These should be off, right? Um, just to make sure that you don't, you know, crash anything. Turn this on. You know, now it's open. Turn this on. Oops. Double click. Turn that on, and then turn that on. Okay. Now uh, I have the circuit set up already. Uh, and I'll post a picture of it um, as well. But as you can see, my analog uh, inputs here are fluctuating pretty widely. And I do have a light shining on it. So when I move my finger over it, uh, it does go down. Okay. Now for now, um, I am going to remove the servo from the circuit temporarily because it's causing havoc here, at least on my board. Uh, the numbers are going crazy everywhere. So as you see, as I unplug it, these numbers actually stabilize. Right Now this is mostly due to it being on the same power circuit. So generally you'll find that a sort of good rule of thumb eventually is that uh, for analog sensors, um, it's actually better to kind of separate them from your uh, output, uh, at least power-wise. Um, it's pro it kind of decreases this sort of interference, okay? But now the example I'm going to use, I am going to use this uh, more sort of initially. Now we remember that uh, for the servo motors, they require an input of 0 to 180, at least for the ones you have, right? This is a degree input. And I'm plugging mine in onto digital pin 9. Checking that is set to servo mode. and this should, uh, by itself, if you activate it, um, by itself, it should make your servo move around. Okay, now, one of the questions here is, so if we look at this and put A pin zero, which is the pin that my light sensor is tied to, so I wave my hand over it and you see it jumps, right? Now, the low end of the range, it seems like it's fluctuating between, you know, 79 to 80-ish, right? So remember that. And then when I put my finger completely over it, it goes up to somewhere close to 280-ish, okay? So 70, 80 to 280. That's about roughly the range, at least the sort of uh, analog circuit is detecting the amount of resistance on that line. All right, okay, so what we want to use first here is the constraint component here, okay? Now what this does is basically you can give it a setting and it will drop uh, the top and the bottom, it will drop any num values that go out of this specific uh, domain range. Right now the domain is 0 to 10, 23. Okay, now the values go into here, right? And anything that's right now the way it's set up, anything that's larger than 1023 and smaller than zero basically does not come out of this end, out of this output. Okay, so just to kind of demonstrate, um, if I were to do something like panel and then say zero, well, let's not do zero. Uh, 200 to 250. Okay. And then click outside. 
So this specifies a domain of between here to here. And you'll see now the output's locked at 200 because any of these values at the current are smaller than 200, so it'll give it 200. And if I wave my hand over it, you know, there's a little bit of in between, you know, if I get a number that's between, you know, 200 to 250, it's a little hard to do. Or any number that's larger than 250, basically it will spit out 250. Okay, so that's what it does. It constrains the values to stay within your specified number domain range. Okay, now this is an alternate way of setting domains. Um, the sort of more quote more and more proper way is to go to maths domain construct domain, and it has a number A, a number B, and so generally, you know, and this is just for clarity's sake. Uh, and I'll actually just do the values that are supposed to work for me. Uh, I'll do 80, make it small and manageable, control C, control V, set up A, B, and this is, uh, what was it again? About 280, so 280. Okay, this basically does the same thing as this, um, and as always, you know, you can do a panel to check, right? So 80 to 280, uh, but this actually just makes adjusting it a tiny bit easier. So sometimes it's useful. So this domain goes in here. So now what it does is, I, you know, sometimes this will drop below 70, uh, drop below 80 to 70 something, but that basically will keep it from dropping that low, and it will keep it from going higher than. 280. Okay, now you'll see this might be something we have to adjust a little bit um, as time goes along. All right, that's constrain. Okay, now this is just there for viewing purposes. Now, uh, one thing that sometimes I'll do just to help you remember is to pull these out uh, a little bit, right click and give it a name. So here we'll say low value a pin zero and if you pull it a little wider the whole thing will come out right right click click on this blank stuff bot here high value a pin zero and same thing click it out all right so now you have something that's more readable or a little bit more helpful and you know what those values are going to be. And you can make a group, control G. All right, next thing, uh, the remap. So double, whoops, oops. Double click, remap, remap numbers. Okay, now actually pay attention to the little icon here. This actually shows you a lot or tells you a lot about what it does. So there's an input value, value to remap, which are basically these values, right? Come in here. There's a source domain, and then there's a target domain. Our source domain is essentially this, right? These are our source numbers. So this is where it's coming from. Our target domain is what we want to remap to, okay? So what I can do is actually just click these, Control C, Control V, copy it. And we'll want to rename these, but let's uh, do this. So right click. Uh, instead of calling low, low value, let's call it servo min. And this guy we'll call servo max. Okay, so this actually should be this 0 to 180, which is the minimum number for the servo and the maximum number for the servo value. So this should be 0, double click, double click, and 180. Okay, and that's your target domain. So the result is when this value is close to zero, what you get here is something closer to zero. Uh, uh, when this value is close to 80, uh, what you get here is closer to zero. When this value is close to 280, then what you get here is close to 180. And so when I cover it, it goes to 180 or thereabouts. And when I let go, it goes back, okay? So just to kind of give you a better idea uh, of how this works, and I'm gonna try to do 
something. Okay, this sort of screen sketching thing, hopefully, it captures it, is that, so you have a value range here that's kind of like this. And I'm drawing with my mouse, so pardon that. <laughs> this is 280, this side is 80, right? And it's a range, and you can kind of, let's say if I drew these in tenths, then, you know, these would be each increments of 10. However, should be 20 increments between, right? On this side, right, this is the source domain. And then this side, at least in this case, which is a smaller range, this is a target domain. And this, as we've said it, is basically 0, 2, 1, 80. Okay? Now obviously these values, you know, like if this was an absolute graph, you know, 0 would be down here and there'd be more, right? And there'd be more going up, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This would go, you know. Um, and, oh, actually I made a mistake because this should be flipped around, right? So the 180 is up here and 0 is down here, okay. And then uh, it basically kind of does this, right? So this middle line would be in the middle, but that gets averaged out. That line gets averaged out, right? So it's kind of like scaling it or shrinking it to decide and map, like whatever value this, let's say this is 200, right? So this turns out to be, I don't know, like 150 or something, whatever, over here, right? So this is kind of like the basic idea behind how the remap button or the remap component works. This is a very commonly used uh, technique, okay? So hopefully this uh, crappy diagram helps you understand how this works. Now, you can ask actually a good question is that what happens if I flip these like I just did earlier? So what if this side is 0 and this side is 180? Well, basically the whole thing gets reversed. So 80, you know, becomes 80 on this end becomes 180 here and then 280 on that end becomes 0 here and then, you know, it's just flipping uh, or kind of reversing the values. Uh, so, and that might come in handy because your servo movement might want to do different things based on the light value, right? So you'll have to kind of test it and see which direction things are and decide, you know, whether actually the 180s are here or 180s there and the zeros here or either side. You can flip either side, you know, it doesn't really matter. Okay. Okay, so now we're done with the crappy hand drawing section. Uh, let's go back to here. Okay, now I'm going to plug my servo back. And these numbers are going crazy again, but whatever. And then, actually, this is the number that we've remapped, right? So, since this is now remapped, and we can see how it's fluctuating now, Right. Since this is remapped, we can actually plug it directly into the DPN9 input and then toggle it. Now, I don't know, maybe you can hear it, but my servo is sort of jerking around like crazy, and I'm kind of holding it close to the microphone to hopefully you guys can hear some of it. Um, so that's kind of not great, right? Uh, you don't want your sort of servo output to be jerking back and forth like crazy. So the way to fix that uh, it should be under here, Firefly, Utility, right? Uh, there are two smoothing uh, components, and let's just like put them in just to see, okay? Now one is based on number of samples and one is sort of based on a smoothing factor. Uh, this is the smoothing factor is you know zero to one, and it's somewhat uh, temporal or time based, right? That's why it's called smoothing temporal. For here, um, we'll just look at samples, and essentially, if we take this and go into here to smooth, and let's just compare these two uh, outputs. Now this number of samples right now, uh, five is actually set a little bit low. So I'm gonna try 30 here. 
just as a first stab. So you'll see now uh, when things are moving around, while the value on the top is moving a lot faster, the value on the bottom is a little bit slower to react, right? So we're, we're kind of just like making it um, a little bit less sensitive, okay? So now if I take this value and push this or this, I mean these are the same, into the deep end 9, then the movement in my servo, even though the sort of uh, direct reaction isn't as fast, but it gets smoothed out or it gets a lot sort of more averaged, right? So there's less of this like digital jerking around, like back and forth, back and forth. Um, this basically kind of slows the reaction to make sure that an input is really an input that you want before it tries to pass it through. Now, just to kind of help you visualize what's happening, uh, there's a thing called the value tracker. So double click VA value tracker. Uh, be advised that actually for some laptops um, in particular, this might be actually a pretty heavy component to run and display. Okay. So instead of looking at numbers, let's look at the value trajectory. So control C, control V. Okay. So look at these values uh, before smoothing and then after smoothing. So these are identical input values and the, the sort of range of the values changes dynamically a little bit. So, you know, right. So I'm covering the photoresistor with my hand and then moving it back out. So you'll see the sort of crazy jerkiness in the graph on top, right, gets smoothed out by the smooth component into the values on the bottom, right? So these are actually smoother curves now, okay? Now, this number, if you change it to something more aggressive, like 60, right, then the smoothing curves get much more pronounced, but also, you know, your uh, servo reacts a lot more slower, okay? So these two work basically identically. This is based on a sampling number. So what it's actually doing is um, it's listing the last 60 values and then averaging them and spitting them out, right? So there's kind of like a rolling number of 60 values that it's spitting out uh, all at the same time. Um, this guy is just based on like a sort of time factor. Okay. So... Uh, we can do a little cleaning up, uh, which is always a good idea to annotate and help you understand what's what, right? So these guys, control group, and then these guys, control G. So this is, and this is where you can kind of uh, right click on a group and name it, right? Which will give it a little bit of uh, annotation. So. This is obviously read, oops, this is obviously write, this is con constrain input range, remap, oops, values, and this is smooth values, okay? So just so you kind of remember and understand, you know, like what's going on with your, you know, definition, it's always a good idea to give yourself some notes. So like when you come back to it in a little bit, that uh, you understand, you know, what the hell is going on. Now, uh, you can take values directly from here to the deep end. You can take values from here to the deep end. It's the same thing. Um, but like I said, uh, for some laptops uh, running this uh, in real time uh, can be a little bit demanding. And if your laptop's lagging, this is why. So if it's lagging, just delete it, right? And this is purely for visualization. There's no like functional use for it, you know. So you can just directly do that and delete both of these guys um, if you want to. Okay, right. That's it for this video.